This is Director Tideman. A stationwide emergency is in effect. We're all gonna burn for what we did to you. Hey, I'm Couch Coop and we're covering quite a few things in this video. First off, we're going to look at Dead Space 2 on high settings. We are also going to address the recent shooting down of remake rumors. So you're looking at Dead Space 1 remake in the background here, and this is on the PC. This is on high settings at 60 frames per second on a 1080p monitor. I was extremely happy against the PlayStation 5 and these settings. The Dead Space remake sold 2 million copies, and apparently the devs were looking at around 5 million. This may be put towards the quashing of the remake of the second game and I want to look at it because it's been a very long time it was the 360 that I last finished this game on the third one left a bad taste with everybody and as you can see I'm a bit of a Dead Space expert now it is fair to say that Dead Space 1 was a niche title in the first place, but this should have got more Game of the Award nods, the sound design, everything about this game as a product is extremely professional. Isaac Clark. I'm going to show you some images and I want you to tell me about them. Last time I sat down with this was in 2011 and it was on an Xbox 360. It was running at about 720p and it was probably just about pushing 30 frames per second. To get it going full spec on a PC is absolutely reason enough to fire it up again. And if you finished that first one and you want more of the same, there's loads of it in here. In hindsight, I did that thing where my last Dead Space memory was the third one and not the second. And the story's rich as hell. The lore, the cult, the marker, there's a lot more going on with this game. <laughs> Visually, for a game of its age, it's doing really well. It took a little bit of time to come over to the PC, so obviously there's that future tech to roster in, but there are sections of this where I'm wearing the same armor as I am in the Dead Space remake, and you often have to do a double take. Also just got loads more going on psychologically. I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's two years after the event of Dead Space 1 and the beginning is excellent with the introduction and the confusing aspect of it all. For some reason, I thought it started with someone having their eye drilled out, which is blatantly not the case. The introduction to getting the plasma cutter is also a terrifying, harrowing, confusion nightmare. A plasma cutter? <laughs> Sort of Max Payne ones you all the time as well with like confusing hallucinogenic scenes. There's no rules to them, they'll, they'll happen whenever. What the fuck? So surprisingly, and I want some feedback on this, the first sort of terminal shop that you get to gives you a massive plethora of suits that are free. And I'm not sure if this is bundled in with part of like a game of the year or added micros or something like that, because I clearly remember having to grind for suits in all of the games, but I might be wrong, but it was awesome. You just checked out what buff they had. One of them costs some actual money, but I was good to go and the same thing applies for loads of the weaponry it's only the fact that you've got four slots that you can't just take everything there's no cost for it but you still have to put the nodes in and there is still later game equipment that does cost a fair penny <laughs> 
The sets in Dead Space 1, both remake and original, are pretty awesome, but they certainly aren't handed out for free in the first shop you get to. Some of them, I feel, are even spoiler territory. Half the reason to get somewhere in this game is to see how badass you can get Isaac looking. I just want to say, on the cheap-ass jump scare front, that radio. No thanks. Isaac. The target audience for Dead Space 1 Remake would have been people who were well into that original game, but I think if you'd never gone near the series and had discovered this anti-gravity, which is stunning in both games to be fair, but this is really an excel point for this remake, it looks incredible, and I'm surprised at how similar all the mechanics are for Dead Space 2 with this system. Dead Space 2 has something that I forgot about as well, and it's like gruesome deaths. There's quite a few of them. Some of them are almost comedy. That all brings me over to aesthetic and the differences with Ishimura and the location that you're in for Dead Space 2. The latter has loads more domestic appliances, facilities, setups, living quarters, and you can tell that it's a far more family focused structure. Ishimura being a mining vessel, I think they were really going for that Nostromo vibe. With this, it's far more of a Hadley's Hope area, and that's well scary for me, seeing all the little kids' trikes around and seeing the remnants of a once functioning society. It gives me a little bit more. I love both ideas, and the homages paid are applicable to some of the greatest sci-fi films out there, but it was very refreshing. This also transpires into the colors, the neons, the signage, all of the weird stuff that you find lying around. I'm talking of weird stuff lying around. This one's a strange one. I can't tell if this is one of the devs or if this is like graffiti that's supposed to be within canon of the station itself. It's, uh, yeah, interesting. It's down there for ages, contemplating that the person wrote it might be on 100 grand a year. Let's get back to Law and Dead Space 2 and the marker and the whole necromorph religion thing. Now this was touched upon in an Aliens comic, the one about the Earth invasion. There's this occult-like setup and they drag people into the hive. It's a really crazy idea. I think it's awesome when they explore the idea of humans being in cahoots with a killer alien species, be it via a religious level or an occultist style. It's, a, it's an awesome area. Playing on awesome areas, there seems to be a lot more animation, struggle, sort of death stuff going on with the close encounters with a lot of the monsters and aliens themselves. Like, he seems to have a few more QTE areas. I'm not too sure if that's just a product of the game being newer, and they didn't add any new ones in the original remake. <laughs> chance to check out that performance there multiple enemies on screen including ragdoll around my feed no performance issues whatsoever watching these guys going at it hammer and tong in the train was also awesome they run right past me i think they were too involved in just being terrifying <laughs> This is technically a versus video. I do want to see how close Dead Space 2 comes to the remake, both on its meta game, even the visuals, and whether those pillars were moved around too much to not make it a decent Dead Space game. one of the easy answers to that question is that the Dead Space 1 remaster does have a lot more atmosphere and sort of creaky scariness due to these effects and mist and particles just being so damn realistic and frightening. Having all that modern tech at your fingertips and being given one of the more terrifying games of the decade, it's a no-brainer that this visual aesthetic is a lot stronger than the previous game that's actually a sequel. If Dead Space 2 was made as a remake on the same level as Dead Space 1, it would be an incredible thing. Could it a bit like the Terminator 1, Terminator 2 situation where the sequel just has everything turned up? Those precious pillars aren't mucked around with too much, they're just amplified. 
do remember the criticisms and they were a little bit like the Resident Evil 4 to Resident Evil 5 situation where 5 was just too Hollywood, too bombastic. Mr. Bombastic! Too many explosions and vehicles flipping over and this does fall into that trap but it's just rescued enough with cool bosses and not having the cardinal sin of introducing blokes with guns. Dead Space 1 does have an intriguing story, don't get me wrong, there's goodies and baddies, but it's just nothing on the journey of madness that Dead Space 2 takes you on. I was also a little bit fearful of it being a bit torture porny and just leaning on loads of gore and no intrigue and decent storytelling, but no, that backstory is amazing and that two years later idea and the whole memory loss thing and the marker coming back and things being implanted. I mean, I don't want to go too far into it, but it's a, it's a damned hellscape. I've also made the jump to looking at Dead Space Remake on the PlayStation 5. Now it has a few modes. I preferred running it at 4K with ray tracing on everything, all bells and whistles, but it didn't sit at 60 frames. And the sweet spot for me with that remake is having it at 1080 and 60 frames and having a lot of those effects on slightly higher notches, I feel, than we see on that PlayStation 5. But again, I'm losing out on resolution. The baby scene, oh my God, I'm not too sure how I feel about this. They also had terrifying killer babies in it, Silent Hill, and they kept them in for the film. We'll take some comments on other video games with killer babies in them. I was also lucky enough to get the opportunity to hold up the Dead Space remake to the Callistro Protocol, and that's a hell of a game. I would put all three of these in a nice little bracket, Dead Space 2, Protocol, and the Dead Space remake. DS1 remake, it's a little bit late to be putting that into an acronym isn't it? It's up there with that Shadow of the Colossus remake remaster and the new Resident Evil 4 slash remake remaster. Again, that's a brilliant bracket. There will be people in the comments who will be like, I've not played either of these, or I've bought them both and they're sitting on a pile. Play them and buy them, because hopefully we might see more from the team in this direction. It's a great universe and the third one, we don't want to be remade, remember that. Was Couch Coop, please like and subscribe. I just put out the Outer Worlds Gorgon DLC. I'll see you down there. <laughs>